Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habati fillah. Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim said regarding tawakkul, he said, so if the servant were to believe that Allah has not made his tawakkul a means, a sabab, to attain and has not made his supplication a means of attaining something then this would mean that the matter concerning which he is having to wuckle and that which he is supplicating for if it were something already decreed then he would attain it whether he had to wuckle or not whether he supplicated or not and if it were something not decreed then it would not attain he would not attain it whether he had to wuckle or not so this is the one who denies putting trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just maybe looking only at the means or yeah and believing that they do not have uh, that is not necessary to supplicate or put one's trust and hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the one who is of the extreme to the other extreme to where they believe that uh you know everything is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is true everything is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but where they go extreme is they say everything is decreed by Allah so I won't make any effort nor will I supplicate because it's already decreed for me I'll either get risk or I won't I'll either starve to death or I'll either uh, buy a house or become a wealthy person or whatever the case may be so this person is rejecting tawakkul in totality by making uh, what is called they they put their it's called ihtijaj bil qadr meaning that they uh, with regards to the the the, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they say everything is written so I don't need to make an effort it's already it's already going to happen but this has never been the case uh, of a sound understanding in Islam Yes, everything is written. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, uh, you know, decreed everything. He created everything. He has ilm of everything. These are some of the maratib al-qadr, the, the levels of the qadr, of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still asks from us to make effort because you and I do not know the end result. We don't know the end result. Yes, I could sit right here in this desert here in New Mexico and just sit and not work. I could say, I love it. I'm comfortable here. I'm going to sit here. And the rain's about to come. I don't think I'm going to seek shelter because everything is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, whether I was going to get wet and get sick and die of the flu was decreed by Allah. Or whether I will be saved. Maybe someone will come with a truck and rescue me and, and give me lots of money and I'll become a wealthy billionaire. Okay? By this kind of thinking, thinking that everything is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just relying on that without making any effort, without supplicating to Allah, because you and I don't know the end result. So I hope that's clear. That's a very important point regarding the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because many people have misconceptions regarding that point. Then Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, says, Therefore, these people clearly stated that tawakkul and supplication are purely and simply acts of servitude and worship, and that they serve no purpose, no other purpose than that. But rather, these things, uh, true tawakkul, this is, uh, tawakkul is a part of ibadah, and this is a part of relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it serves uh, a purpose other than just just the ibadah but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this influences what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for you by supplicating and this is all still a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree and will furthermore that if the servant abandoned tawakkul and supplication he would not miss out on anything decreed for him then some of the more extreme of them declare that making supplication that one should not be taken to account for mistakes and forgetfulness is of no benefit since it uh, I eat not be taken to account for that is something guaranteed to occur so meaning as we we mentioned before that some of the people believe that you don't, you know, everything is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so you don't need to make an effort, and how can you be held responsible or 
uh, for for the end result, and that it's it's all decreed. So you don't need to make tawakkul on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But this is a, a very extreme belief that some of the people hold. He said, Rahimullah Taala. Then I have seen one of those who go to the furthest extreme amongst them say in a book of his that it is not permissible to make such a supplication. Rather, it is allowed to recite that ayat, but not to read it as a supplication. He said, because supplicating with that necessitates doubt that it will come about. This is because one who supplicates is in a state between fear and hope, and that to doubt that this will come about is to doubt that which Allah has informed of. Then Ibn al-Qayyim said, so look at the grave matters that denial of the means, meaning the means of asbab, the means for attaining something, leads to. And it leads a person to declaring it to, it to be forbidden to supplicate with something which Allah has praised his pious servants for supplicating with and seeking. So the Muslims have never ceased from the time of their Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until this time supplicating with this supplication and it is one of the most excellent of supplications. Uh, then the reply to this futile delusion is to say, so here Ibn al-Qayyim is talking about how to refute those people who have this false understanding and it shows you how confused a lot of Ahlul Bid'ah are because of their strange uh, them, them giving taqdeem their preference to their intellect and intellectual discourse and reasoning over the nasus of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over the text the the book of Allah the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the authentic uh, nasus from the sunnah the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then he says rahimahullah ta'ala then the reply uh, he, he says uh, then the reply to this futile delusion is to say there is a third case other than the two cases that you have mentioned and it is the true reality this is that what that it was decreed that something would come about when its means tawakkul and supplication are present so supplication and tawakkul were made two means for the attainment of what is desired so Allah decreed that it would come about when the servant carried out its means. So if he does not perform the means, then the result will not occur. And that's why it's uh, it's important. That's a message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in authentic hadith. And the hadith about, uh, it, which refers to uh, uh, the one who haqqa tawheed. You know, when he, the Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu was riding on a donkey with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Mu'adh, tadri ma haqa Allah ala ibadi wa ma haqa li ibadi ala Allah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon his servant and the right of the servant upon Allah? And then he said, Allah wa rasuluhu alam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, the haqq of Allah on his servant is that he worships him and him alone and doesn't associate partners with him. And the haq of the servant on a, upon Allah is that if the servant does this, meaning doesn't commit shirk, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will uh, not punish him. He said, Haq Allah li ibadi an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin. Wa haq li ibadi ala Allah an la yu'adhima man la yushriku bi shayin. That the, so the right of the servant on Allah is that he will not punish him. Meaning Allah will not punish the servant if he does not commit shirk. And uh, uh, later in the hadith, Mu'adh said, uh, Ya Rasulullah, uh, 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 what means, he said, O Messenger of Allah, should I tell the people? And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, La, la tekellimhum fayyatakilu, or kama qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, don't say to them, because then they will become dependent. Meaning that the people, if they know that they only have to not commit shirk and perfect their tawheed, then they will depend upon that and they will stop doing deeds. So this is the point, meaning that the Prophet Sallallahu encouraged us from the Sunnah is that we do actions. We make actions and we make efforts. And that is the correct understanding of tawakkul on Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Then Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned some examples. 
he said, so Allah decreed that it would come about when the servant carried out its means. So if he does not perform the means, then the result will not occur. So he gives some examples. This is just like his decreeing a child for a man if he has intercourse with a woman who can bear a child. If he does not have intercourse, then a child will not be created. So meaning that this is a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in order for us to, uh, for women to experience childbirth, it has to come through sexual intercourse with a man. This is the origin. Of course, we have new technologies, which doesn't negate that, but it still comes with from the semen from a man. It doesn't come from a semen from a horse. It doesn't come from whatever a fly produces. It doesn't come from anything, but it comes from human beings. It comes from a man to a woman. He said, also he decreed a man's being filled if he eats and having his thirst quenched if he drinks. But if he does not do so, then he will not be full, nor will his thirst be quenched. Likewise, he decreed the fulfillment of Hajj and reaching Mecca for one who journeys and takes the road to it. But if he sits in his house, he will not reach Mecca. This is very important, and some of the people may not believe this, but there are those extreme Sufis. You will find them around the world. The guy will be in Chechnya. The guy will be in Dagestan. The guy will be in China. The guy will be in Seattle, Washington. And then he will say, you know, uh, uh, he will be some sort of holy Sufi saint or sheikh. And the person will say, Sheikh, what did you do yesterday? And he'll say, I was in Mecca last night. I was in Hajj last night. I was with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam last night. This is what they say. And they and they make no effort. And obviously they're not with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and having a conference with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or having some personal relationship other than what the messengers, other than through ibadah with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is false and these people are ahla yeah, the ones that are in this extreme left level have reached the level of kufr because they are lying uh, deviants who lie and claim some sort of holiness and that they make hajj out of the season of hajj or some other false uh, false uh, beliefs based on taqdeeb and nusus that they are lying about the textual proofs which go against their false aqidah and their false lies and charlatanism. Then he says, likewise he decreed entry into paradise for those who accept Islam and carry out the righteous deeds. But if he abandons Islam and does not perform his righteous deeds, then he will never enter it. So it shows us the importance. Again, Ibn al-Qayyim's whole Risala, this, 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 this little treatise that we're going through, is showing us the importance that part of Tawakkul is making effort, is doing deeds. If you want to achieve righteousness, you have to do good deeds. It isn't just by uh, our tongues, and it isn't just by sitting and, say, and just saying that, uh, you know, and hoping that Allah was, is going to give us the mercy and enter us in the paradise, but rather you have the ability to make effort and deeds, then you must do so. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be from Ahli Iman and those who people who go forward doing what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.